What comes to mind when you think of museums? Are they stuffy old rooms? The death place of dreams? Are they where you were dragged once on a school trip? Are they buildings you'd always prefer just to skip? Well, we'll tell you something. You're missing out. Museums have something to shout about. It's surprising what goes on in our little places. We're not just about some old things in cases. We all tell stories that you might find surprising. And new events we're always devising. Be it up in Lisburn. Or down in Crow Park. Museums are thrilling, we should remark. What's in one museum won't be in another. The beauty is, we complement each other. So let's take a look at some special pieces from both our collections and see what they teach us. Firstly, in Lisburn, we see a wedding dress. Designed by Sybil Connolly, this beautiful gown displays one of her trademark techniques of finely pleated linen. The gown was made in bleached linen for an American client. Woven in County Armagh by Spence Bryson & Co, it was exclusively pleated for Connolly's Dublin-based fashion house. Sybil Connolly was known for her work with Irish textiles. Her design reputation gained her famous clients, such as Jackie Kennedy and, more recently, Gillian Anderson. We don't have a famous dress in Crow Park, but the GA Museum does house these shorts. Outside of Gaelic Games matches, Muhammad Ali's fight on the 19th of July 1972 is one of the most famous events to take place in the stadium. Here are the sign shorts worn by Ali for the contest against Al Blue Lewis, alongside a signed boxing glove and a Hogan stand ticket for the occasion. While Ali didn't appear to rate Lewis's chances in his pre-fight interviews, the fight did go to the 11th round before Ali won on a technical knockout. In the Irish Linen Centre and Lisburn Museum, you can view the wonderful Locks at Eden Derry by John Luke. This 1944 painting shows the River Ligon at Eden Derry with John Shaw Brown's linen damask weaving factory in the background. Luke captured the vibrancy and life of the river which rises at Sleeve Croob in mid-County Down and travels 50 miles to Belfast Lock, passing through Lisburn. The GA Museum collection also contains artworks, including this Oils on Board piece by David Sweeney. Titled Transilience, meaning an abrupt change or leaping from one state to another, it was commissioned by the museum to commemorate the Bloody Sunday 1920 centenary. The artist is a former Dublin senior hurling captain from the Ballyboden St Enda's Club. Lisburn Museum houses this incredible scrapbook compiled by local cricket player and correspondent George Crothers. He was a buyer for Barber's Linen Threadworks at Hilden and was a hugely interesting character. George used to write his cricket column in the local Lisburn Standard newspaper anonymously and frequently had a go at himself. The album contains photos of the West Indian cricket player, lawyer and politician Larry Nicholas Constantine's visit to Lisburn in 1946. This visit was to help raise funds for the club's new pavilion. Constantine, who was named after his father's Irish friend O'Leary, became the UK's first black peer. He was a prominent voice for racial equality in a period of widespread discrimination and played an important role in the passing of the 1965 Race Relations Act, securing rights for people of colour. Travelling back to Crow Park, where cricket doesn't automatically spring to mind, you may be surprised to learn that GA founder Michael Cusick was an avid cricketer. Here is a letter written by the man himself to Morris Devon 
in which he arranges the first meeting of a new association. It's dated August 26th, 1884, and suggests a meeting should be held in some central place in Tipperary. This letter sets the scene for the foundation of the GAA. Take a look at the weaver's cottage in Lisburn. Linen production was literally a cottage industry. Women spun, hence the term spinster, while men wove and children wound thread onto bobbins. Weavers' cottages had high ceilings to accommodate their looms. Did you know Queen Victoria took up spinning? This advertising card for the weaving firm of William Liddell, Donna Cloney, featured the Queen at her Belfast made wheel in 1865. The monarch took up spinning after the death of her beloved husband, Prince Albert. In her diary, she recorded that, I was photographed with my spinning wheel. The Countess Blucher came to my room and showed me how to spin. I am getting on in spite of a bad wheel and bad flax. In Crow Park, we don't have a full cottage, but we do have this seat, and it's an interesting one. This section of seating is from the original Cusick stand in Crow Park, and for over 50 years, it was part of the stadium furniture, providing a vantage point from which countless GA supporters cheered on their hurling, football and camogie heroes. In 1938, a new stand was built in Crow Park and named in honour of Michael Cusick, founder of the GAA. The stand was modified in the 1960s. The current Cusick stand was complete in 1995 as part of a complete redevelopment of Crow Park. Back to Lisburn again. Here we see this miniature damask napkin embossed with the crest of Queen Mary, wife of King George V. The napkin was produced for inclusion in Queen Mary's doll's house. Designed by the architect Sir Edwin Lutons, who is responsible for the Cenotaph at Whitehall, London, and the Irish National War Memorial at Island Bridge, this model house featured the latest fashions, luxury linens, and a range of miniature accessories, including a real flushing toilet. Gifted to Queen Mary, it showed off the talent of craftsmen from across the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland. The house is on permanent display at Windsor Castle. A treasure of a different kind can be found in the GA Museum. Here is the original O'Duffy Cup the trophy awarded to the winners of the All-Ireland Senior Camogie Championship. The cup is named after Sean O'Duffy, who presented it to the Camogie Association of Ireland in 1932. Dublin became the first team to lift the cup, which was designed and made by Margaret Meredith. Lisburn Museum holds a vast selection of objects, books, programmes, tickets and prints relating to Lisburn and district's rich sporting history. The collection we see here illustrates just a snippet from the stores. Here's a Dunlop tennis racket with racket frame. Wooden gymnastics exercise clubs. Fagan ice skates from the 1960s and a golf club marked L. Forshaw G. C. Lisburn, who played for Lisburn in the 1920s. Did you know Lisburn's first GAA club was formed in 1888? The club hosted the second Ulster Football Championship final in 1890, with Armagh Harps beating Belfast. While there's no shortage of sporting objects in the GAA Museum, this collection of hurling helmets is particularly interesting. The history of the hurling helmet is an intriguing one and its evolution is largely credited to Micheál Murphy, who played hurling with University College Cork and Blackrock Cork. In 1964, while playing a match, 
Mihal suffered a serious head injury, which led him to wear and promote protective headgear for hurling. Among the helmets we can see here is this Spalding American football helmet he imported in 1967. Towns, cities, countries and institutions all have foundational documents. This Nagarvi, later Lisburn, was granted a charter in 1662. But what does it mean? King Charles II, who had just returned to the throne after the Restoration, elevated loyal Lisburn's church to the status of a diocesan cathedral and granted the town the right to elect MPs to the Irish Parliament. And from the Charter of Lisburn, all the way to New York City. This New York GAA jersey is made from wool. It was worn by New York captain Eddie Sapper O'Neill in 1927. That year, the Kerry football team toured America and three matches were played against New York selections. Around 100,000 people watched the series and New York won all three games. From flax to fabric at Lisburn Museum shows how linen has been made and used since Egyptian times. Made from the stems of flax, linen has long been a high status cloth. The pharaoh's mummies were wrapped in it and a piece from the tomb of Tutankhamun dating from 1500 BC is on display. Amazing! While not as old, we also love the City of Tribes banner, which takes pride of place as you enter the GA Museum. Dating from the 1880s, this double-sided, oil-painted banner features a figure of Hibernia, representing Ireland holding a shield with an Irish wolfhound at her feet, and behind her, a tower and high cross. This banner was likely commissioned in Galway for the City of the Tribes League Committee. It was donated to the GA Museum by the Walsh family. John Walsh was registrar of the League and a delegate to the Galway County Board. Royalty often had items made at great expense. Lisper Museum's collections includes these fabulous stockings carrying the monogram of Queen Victoria. They were monogrammed by the Belfast firm Robinson & Cleaver. They opened the Royal Irish Linen Warehouse at Donegal Place in 1888. The same year, Queen Victoria granted Belfast its charter as a city. Personal belongings are always of interest, and we have some in the GA Museum too. Dating from the late 19th century, it is said that GA founder Michael Cusick was rarely seen without this stick in his hand. He referred to the stick as Boss Gon Sogarth, which translates to death without a priest. And it's thought that it was a relic from the faction fights of his ancestors, when gang conflicts were a feature of rural life. Central to everything we do here at Lisburn are our weaving demonstrations. Here you can see our original Jacquard looms. In 1804, a French man, Joseph Marie Jacquard, designed and built a new type of loom. This used a series of thousands of punch cards to weave figured patterns, such as floral designs and family crests. This revolutionary invention allowed patterns to be woven automatically and repeatedly. The Jacquard mechanism was, in effect, a primitive computer. And central to everything we do at the GA Museum is the celebration of our players. Our Hall of Fame serves as a permanent reminder of the greatness of those players who adorned our games at the highest level. It is important that they are remembered not only by those who were lucky enough to see them, but crucially by those who did not have that privilege. 
Every year, new inductees are invited to the GA Museum for a ceremony where they are officially welcomed into the Hall of Fame. In this exhibition, you can watch footage of the greats in action. Over 100 years ago, the island of Ireland was in the midst of the Irish Revolution. While many wanted an independent Irish Republic, in the north, the majority wanted to retain the union between Ireland and Britain. This war came to Lisburn in 1920. In March, Royal Irish Constabulary District Inspector Swansea had been implicated in the murder of the Mayor of Cork, Tomás McCurtain, and he was moved to Unionist Lisburn for safety. On a sunny Sunday afternoon in late August, the IRA assassinated Swansea just outside where the museum building now sits. The murder horrified locals and their anger was taken out on local businesses and Lisburn's Catholic community. Hundreds of Catholic families fled and there were several days of vicious rioting. As this front page of the Illustrated London News depicted, Lisburn was left like a bombed out town in France during the Great War. Conflict is also addressed in the GA Museum, most notably in our Remembering Bloody Sunday exhibition. These glasses on display were worn by Annie Burke from Sligo when she attended the infamous match on November 21st, 1920. When the shooting broke out and chaos ensued, Annie's glasses got damaged. One of the Tipperary players shouted that Mick Hogan was dead and pointed to where he was lying, not far from the goalposts. As soon as she heard this, Annie Burke ran across the field to where Mick Hogan's body was lying and covered it with her coat, kneeling beside him until after he had received the last rites. She then returned to where her friends were waiting and they left Crow Park in silence. Annie never wore her glasses again. They were never repaired and never cleaned after the events in Crow Park on Bloody Sunday. The glasses were presented to the GA Museum by Annie's daughter, Sister Margaret Luby. Finally, there's Flaxy. Lisper Museum offers an innovative program for the under fives. We believe that kids are curious, capable and confident learners from birth. We devise activities that enable very young visitors to learn from museum exhibitions and collections. Our museum is a special place to have fun. And you can even bring your adults. Clusog in the GA Museum agrees. Our Irish hair mascot leads the family-friendly Junior Explorer Tours here at Crow Park. Young visitors can pick up a Junior Explorer passport and follow a trail around the museum. Figure out the clues along the way by visiting some of the museum's most famous exhibits to reveal a secret sentence. Thanks for taking the time to listen. We hope we've made our collections glisten. Now that you know what we're all about, please visit us the next time you're out.